collapse of the steady state theory. Another materialist, the English astronomer Sir Fred Hoyle, was one of the foremost who were disturbed by the Big Bang Theory. In the middle of the century, Hoyle championed a theory called the steady state, which was similar to the constant universe approach of the 19th century. The steady state theory argued that the universe was both infinite in size and eternal in duration. With the sole visible aim of supporting the materialist philosophy, this theory was totally at variance with the Big Bang Theory, which held that the universe had a beginning. Those who defended the steady state theory opposed the Big Bang for a long time. Science, however, was working against them. In 1948, George Gamow came up with another idea concerning the Big Bang. He stated that after the formation of the universe, by a big explosion, a radiation surplus should have existed in the universe left over from this explosion. Moreover, this radiation ought to be uniformly diffused across the universe. This evidence, which ought to have existed, was soon to be found. In 1965, two researchers by the name of Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson discovered these waves. This radiation, called the cosmic background radiation, did not seem to radiate from a particular source, but rather pervaded the whole of space. Thus it was understood that this radiation was left over from the initial stages of the Big Bang. Penzias and Wilson were both awarded a Nobel Prize for their discovery. In 1989, NASA sent the cosmic background explorer COBE satellite into space to do research on cosmic background radiation. It took only eight minutes for COBE to verify Penzias and Wilson's calculations. The COBE had found the remains of the big explosion that had taken place at the outset of the universe. Defined as the greatest astronomic discovery of all times, this finding explicitly proved the Big Bang Theory. Another important piece of evidence for the Big Bang was the amount of hydrogen in, and helium in space. In the researches, it was understood that the hydrogen-helium concentration in the universe complied with the theoretical calculations of the hydrogen-helium concentration remaining from the Big Bang. If the universe had no beginning, and if it had existed since eternity, its hydrogen constituent should have already been completely consumed and converted to helium. All of this compelling evidence caused by the Big Bang Theory to be embraced by the scientific community. The Big Bang model was the latest point reached by science concerning the origin of the universe. Defending the steady state theory alongside Fred Hoyle for years, Dennis Asyama described the final position that they had reached after all the evidence for the Big Bang Theory was revealed. Asyama stated that he had defended the steady state theory not because he deemed it valid, but because he wished that it were valid. Asyama goes on to say that his, as evidence began to pile up, he had to admit that the game was over and that the steady state theory had to be dismissed. Professor George Abel of the University of California also accepts the ultimate victory of the Big Bang and states that currently available evidence shows that the universe originated billions of years ago with the Big Bang. He concedes that he has no choice but to accept the Big Bang theory. With the Big Bang's victory, the myth of eternal matter that constituted the base of the materialist philosophy is thrown into the trash heap of history. What, then, 
was before the Big Bang and what was the power that brought the universe into being with this big explosion when it was non-existent.